Welcome to Revitalize and Replant with Mark Clifton, where we equip pastors to take their churches from declining to thriving by pointing them to a new future and a new hope. Join us weekly for encouragement and practical advice in your pastoring journey. Hey man, I am Mark Clifton, and I'm here with... Mark Halleck. Mark Halleck. Man, we are in your church. Oh. We are in Inglewood, Colorado. I couldn't be more pumped that you're here. And and Kyle's here too. Kyle is with us running the board. Dan is not with us. He's you not know, with Dan us. has a full time job. Yeah. He he does all That's kinds right. of television commercials and, and movie trailers and every once in a while he can't be with us. Wasn't and, he on one recently you posted him out? Yeah, like, he was on the the World Series, right? The World Series. Yeah. He he did some Ford commercials on the World That's Series. So awesome. I know. Isn't that crazy? I can't believe he even hangs out with us. I can't either. Yeah. I really can't. Hey, we are here in Inglewood, Colorado today. We're going to do some brand new podcast. And I just want to thank you all for listening and for responding. Um, man, it, it really, we, we joke a lot about dozens and dozens of people who listen. But honestly, um, man, it, it's approaching 10,000 yeah. downloads a month. And we are really grateful for that. And we love your feedback. And we love doing this because we love the church and we love you. Today, we're going to talk about something. This one is, is man, it, it's a Tom Rainer article, right? And every now and then, our good brother, Tom Rainer, he writes some articles that really make you start to think. And yep. that's what we like. Yes. So he wrote a recent blog, and we're going to put it in the show notes here. And it's a great point of beginning of discussion on why non-denominational churches grow faster than Southern Baptist churches as a whole. Very interesting. Mm. So, absolutely. He gives some statistics, Mark. Do you have those in front of you where he talks about the the worship attendance in Southern Baptist and how it has dropped off in recent years? Yeah, yeah. Let me just read a couple of these. So, like the Southern Baptist Convention's peak membership was 16.2 million in 2006. Okay. In 2000, excuse me. Yeah. In 2022, it was 13.2 million. Okay. Let's let's hold hold that thought. Okay. So, we had 16 million members in. 2006. 2006. Yep. And we had 13 million members in 2022. 2022. 2022. Yep. yep. Now, we've lost three or four million members in those years. However, I will say unequivocally, a lot of that has to do with we are taking seriously what membership means, and many churches are, quote, cleaning up the roles. Right. And when the churches used to carry hundreds and hundreds of people who are no longer active, that that is not done as much as it used to be. And so I think we're seeing fewer and fewer. I don't, I don't, and, and I don't think that's necessarily a huge drop in membership. I think it reflects a lot of, of, uh, cleaning up as we say yeah. the role it's a more accurate reflection thank you yeah a more accurate reflection yeah. Yeah. is a better way of saying it than cleaning up That's the good. roles but i have many personal friends who have said you know i went to this church they had a thousand members and by the time we went through and made the roles accurate it was 400 yes. and, and not just a few halleck i've right. had lots a of lot. guys yeah. tell me that yeah so i think that's part of it yep um and also, however, let's look at the attendance numbers, the worship yeah, attendance. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, the it says that uh, the SBC's peak weekly attendance was 6.2 million, so roughly 6 million in 2009, okay? Okay. By 2022, weekly attendance declined to 3.8 million. Yeah, so he says that's a 40%. Rainer that's that's says, pretty big. big Ra- yeah, Rainer yeah. says that's a 40% loss between 2009 and 2022 in weekly worship attendance. Now, you have to factor in COVID. Right. He's got, those are 2022 numbers. And again, we're going to put all these in the show notes so you can look them up. But, you know, 3.8 million average worship attendance in 2022, over 6 million average worship attendance in 2009. But obviously, you have to factor in something called 2020, which mm-hmm. was COVID. And when we were all shut down and that just, you know, worship it just wasn't there. And these are 2022 numbers. And so even in those numbers, yeah. there's some hangover from 2021. And people will be quick to point out that attendance has grown last year. In 2022, right. it was yes. larger than 2021 yep. and 2020. However, we cannot ignore the fact that worship attendance and baptisms and small group attendance yep. they are not growing in southern baptist life right and uh, and that is something we all are deeply concerned about and so rainer says but you know in non-denominational churches they are growing 
They seem to be growing. So number one, what does he say? He gives us about five reasons that he says non-denominational churches are growing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And so, I agree with some of those, yep. and then some I don't. So yeah, let's I think, talk I think about we it. would both say just on the front end that we would say yes and eh, I don't know yeah. about both of these, right? <laughs> yes, and so, I don't know. I agree. So number one, here's the first one. Non-denominational churches tend to be more evangelistic. What do you think about that? I think that's a pretty broad statement. Uh, but it's like all of these that we're going to talk about, the non-denominational churches, their their figures are not uh, affected by 150-year-old dying churches. Right. Most non-denominational churches are a relatively recent thing that's come mm-hmm. along. You didn't have a lot of non-denominational churches in the early 20th century. Right. They were all pretty much part of a mainline denomination. And so in Southern Baptist life with 45,000, 50,000 churches, there's a number of churches in that group that don't baptize anybody, uh, you know, tens of thousands of churches that are really in decline, whereas in the non-denominational, most of those are newer churches. And so in that sense, and you know, newer churches yeah. are more evangelistic, right? Well, right. That's exactly Aren't right. You, you want to dive well, into and I that? Think, I think that's kind of the heart of it. That because, is the heart of it. Um, I think newer churches, and this is why as Southern Baptists, we believe so strongly in planting new churches, Right, is there's an urgency. There's an urgency. We have to get the gospel out. We right. have to reach this community. Right. And sadly, just as, as human, by human nature, man, we can tend to become pretty inward focused over time oh, yeah. and lose that sense of urgency. Oh. Um, whereas I think in, in some of these, these non-denominational churches, they're landing in a place that needs the gospel. They're fired up yep. and they are, they're doing whatever it takes to they're reach the lost. Takes, right. And you yep. know, I, I, on a podcast, we start throwing out numbers and, you know, people's eyes glaze over and their ears glaze over. So I want to be careful about that. But for, for decades, we have realized that in a church older than, older than 40 years of age, uh, it takes about 50 members to reach one person for Christ mm. in a church less than five years of age. It's about nine members to reach one person for Christ. Yeah. New churches are far more effective at evangelism, whether they're non-denominational or denominational. Yeah. And again, there are more new non-denominational churches. That's why that that skews that way. But again, let's take just a second. Your church may be an older church. That's why we like replanting. That's right, exactly. Replanting rebirth in That's that right. church it's planting DNA. And remember, when Jesus spoke to the church at Ephesus in Revelation 1, he said, you got to do three things. You got to remember how far you've fallen. You got to repent of what you've done. And then he said this, you have to return to what you did at first. Mm. And so uh, church plants are that's very good. effective at evangelism, like you said, because that's why they're there. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's everything is geared toward that. Yep. But as the church grows older, it becomes more about how can we take care of the people we have. I love that. Well, and that's just going off that. And so pastor, leader, this is where we need to pray and ask the Lord to help us grow in infusing that fresh vision yep. and passion to reach the lost. Listen, if you're part of a Southern Baptist church, man, we believe in getting the gospel to the nations and it starts right at our doorsteps. This is, we're a gospel people. We're a great commission people. And so, you know, we, we need to do our part to help lead our people to recapture that vision. Okay, okay. Now, according to Rayner, yep. non-denominational churches tend to invest more locally in their community. Yeah, that's interesting. What, talk about that for a second. Is that because, would we say, is that part of where as denomination as a denomination, we're giving to different entities, our money, uh, our focus is being spread out uh, among different causes and, and, and places, whereas a non-denominational church can say, man, we're going all in right here. He just says non-denominational churches tend to include more for local evangelism. And I think that goes back to the fact that most of them are are, are, are newer, first-generation churches. Okay. Right? Yeah. When you're talking to a church that's in its first generation, in its first 50 years, there is more of an evangelistic uh, emphasis. And But when you get past that, mm-hmm. right— it becomes more taking care of the building, That's right. taking care of, and and also, and I think we can push back a little bit on our brother Rayner here. Uh, Southern Baptist, we give to the cooperative program, and we give to the state missions. Uh, state missions is through the cooperative program, but you give the local association, and really your your state convention, your local association, they do a lot of local ministry. Right. So in that sense, when you're giving to That's the cooperative point. program and you're giving to associational missions, you're giving to local ministry. However, I do think he's talking here about evangelism, and I will tell you, my brother. 
When I look at dying churches, most of them have a very small, if any, evangelism budget. Hmm. Not spending money on trying to reach people, connect to people, meet yeah. people's needs so they can share Jesus with them. Right. Uh, I think that's absolutely true. And so I think he's right. So yeah. number one, we got to yep. understand that we got to be having an urgency about evangelism. And number yep. two, we got a budget for evangelism. Exactly. Yep. Number three, non-denominational churches usually do not engage in issues of conflict to the level that denominational churches do. Now, this one I agree with. Uh, the other two, I think, nah, I'm not sure. But this one, I think he's yeah, right. I, I think, think, yeah, I think right. and I think one of the reasons we see some young guys, particularly young guys in Southern Baptist life say, hey, I'm going to opt out, is that they just don't want to deal with the drama. Yeah, that's and right. Look, we have drama in our politics, in our schools, in our workplace, in our social media. And so there are some people who say, I don't want a denomination in drama. I mean, I, I get that, but it's worth what we're doing to make it happen. We've had yeah. several podcasts about why I'm a Southern Baptist, why it's worth doing this for. Um, but certainly, you can't deny the fact that uh, non-denominational churches don't have to get mixed up in denominational politics. However, I would say this, that is not a panacea. Mm -hmm. Because a non-denominational church, I mean, they may have a statement of faith, right. but the fact that we don't, we're not a denomination sort of invites all kinds of opinions to show up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And and how do you know your elders are all on the same page? And you call a pastor, and what what does he come from? Talk a yeah, little bit yeah, about yeah. the confusion well, that can. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess you know, I would say this when I look at this one, I think yes, it's true. Um, I understand not wanting to deal with drama, but this is also what makes the Southern Baptist Convention great. All right, go because, with that. Because, and here's why. Yeah. Because we're better together, man. All right. It's worth it. Like, think about a family. A family that just avoids one another. Oh, yeah. And there's no drama. I mean, yeah. typically your families <laughs> that, honestly, you wonder, do you guys even love each other? Do you like each other? You're never even around. There's yeah. the, the, the families in our church, I can tell you, who, uh, who are the deepest, most the most committed families to one another. And it's true. Marriages are those that actually engage and disagree sometimes. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. so I think in our own churches, this is what this is could be a defense of congregationalism with all the headaches that can bring. That's right. There's a beauty in it that we're a family and people's right. voices matter. And we're, I believe we as congregations are stronger when we endure that together, I think the denomination on the denominational level, it's so true, man, there is drama and there's, man, there's weird stuff and guys, you know, sure. but here's what I know at the end of the day, I think we're stronger because of it. And I think we accomplish more for the sake of the gospel and the kingdom. I agree because of it. I agree. When you give up on the denomination because of the conflict, you, you, the, the cure is worse than the ailment. You're, yes. you're, you're giving up more than you're receiving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I really think that's true. Because that doesn't mean you're not going to have conflict in a non-denominational totally, church. Totally. Somebody shows up who has a different opinion of baptism than you do or something yep. like that, right? Okay, so again, just real quick. Number yep. one, the reason he says non-denominational churches grow faster because they're more evangelistic, that's because most of them are newer. And so we believe in church planting. Number two, they give more to uh, evangelism locally. And and again, any church can do that. Number three, they're not engaged in large, overarching denominational conflict. And number four, and I this one I do disagree okay. with, Dr. Rainer, okay. if okay. you're listening. I know he listens to every <laughs> oh, sure. podcast three he or four really times. He really cares what yeah, we think. Yeah, really. Uh, okay, non-denominational churches, number four, do not carry the name baggage that a denominational church might carry. Okay, talk about that well, one. Well, I'll tell you what. the 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 One of the largest... Method, boy, let me tell you what. One of the largest. <laughs> one of He's the, wringing his hands. This I guy's know. ready for this. One, one of the largest. One of the largest United Methodist churches on the planet is the Church of the Resurrection in Kansas City. And you walk, you drive up to that church, and there's this huge sign that says "The United Methodist Church of the Resurrection." Everything they put out is "The United Methodist mm. Church of the Resurrection." I mean, that just blows that out of the water. Yeah. And also, you could talk about a lot of our really large, strong Baptist churches across North America that reach lots of people that are really large. They got Baptist in the name. I, I, I really think unchurched people, I think we put too much emphasis on mm. that. I mm -hmm. really do. The reason someone comes to a church, the yeah. reason someone is engaged in a church is because somebody reached out to them. That's right. And, so, and That's somebody right. shared Christ with them and somebody shared love with them. And, and they, they come into that church and they don't come because of a name. And I don't yeah. think they necessarily 
stay away because of the name. And as I'm saying that, people are yelling at their devices <laughs> saying, yes, they do. You don't know what a bad yeah. reputation Baptists have. Look, you know what a bad reputation uh, Scientology <laughs> has, but they yeah. still people come to that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a cop-out, yeah. frankly. And I like the idea... Uh, Adam Hamilton, pastor at Church of Resurrection, mm-hmm. he was often asked about that. Why do you put that up there? The United Methodist Church of Resurrection. Yeah. He said, because I want, <laughs> I want what we to do, what we're doing in our church, I want it to benefit the whole denomination. Mm, I don't want, I don't want to act like we're ashamed of our denomination. Now, <laughs> lately, <laughs> you know, bless the name, they're about to split, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. with the global yeah. Methodist, yeah, oh, yeah, United oh, yeah, Methodist, oh, yeah. and, it, and Adam's in the middle yeah, of all that. Yeah, yeah. But but this was several years ago, and yeah. he could have easily just called it the Church of the Resurrection, yeah. but it is United Methodist. And I, again, there are Baptist churches that do that. Yeah. There are uh, Christian churches that do that. Mm-hmm, What's the mm-hmm. big Christian church in, in uh, Louisville? Great South, Great. Southeast. Yeah, yeah, Southeast Christian. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think there's plenty of reasons to say. I, I just don't think—I yeah. think that's overblown. Let me—I want to— just say something about a point you made that's so good. And this is what we got to remember. Typically people who are looking for a denominational church are those who grew up with that denomination yes. many times. I could just tell you in Denver and in the North and increasingly in the South, we're, we're just moving way beyond that time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so part of it is if you're reaching lost people, lost people don't really care. They don't really know. No, they don't know. And so again, I think if you're trying to, you know, if you're focused more on believers than reaching lost people, that may be an issue, but that's part of the problem. It's like we need to reach lost people with the gospel and and lead with Jesus in all of that. So, right. okay, number five? Yeah, the last okay. one he has on L- this list. Last one is this. Non-denominational churches tend to be newer churches that grow faster than older churches. Well, and that's the whole reason. I think you could look at all five of these, and when he says non-denominational churches are, are reaching people and growing faster than denominational churches? Well, it's because, as we said, most non-denominational churches are first-generation churches. They're not third and fourth generation yeah, yeah, churches. Yeah. They're not 150 years old. They haven't been in that community for all those years. And and, and so as, as a Southern Baptist denomination or other denominations, we have a lot of churches that are three, four, five generations old, and they're really struggling and barely hanging on. And that sort of skews all of those numbers. But again, we're going to end this podcast with the way we started this podcast— doesn't matter how many years your church has been existent, mm-hmm. you can have a new church DNA if you do just a few things. And Amen. what are those That's things, good. Mark? That's good. Well, I would say, why don't you start? Let's go back and forth. Let's do a little ping pong. <laughs> little ping pong. I think the first thing you do is you make decisions <laughs> based not on the people you have, but the people you need to reach. Oh, man. I mean, your, your main decisions uh, are not on retaining the folks you have, so we don't yeah. lose any more people. Amen, amen. But rather, how do we make decisions that focus on how are we reaching people? Yep. And how we how can we can do that? It's just an outward focus. It's frankly. an outward focus. It's loving the neighborhood, it's an loving the focus. community, being an outward yep. focus, and being positive and full of amen, hope. Amen, amen. And I would say ping ping back back to me this is where prayer is absolutely essential okay and here's why if our hearts don't change and break for lost people in the community we're never going to do what it takes to sacrificially love that community. that's right and so again they go together hand in hand right is man we've got to go out but we also need to pray and i think people go man prayer yeah prayer we need god to do this and so i think mobilizing our people to actually take prayer seriously in this it changes our hearts to do what it takes to humble ourselves before the Lord. And then financially, your budget needs to reflect where your priorities are. Mm. And certainly giving to missions is a huge priority because the Lord will honor that, but also giving to evangelism. And we've talked before, if you don't have any children in your church, mm-hmm. you need to budget for children. Yes. Yeah, we, yep. don't, we don't have any budget yep. for children because we don't have any children. Yep. You, you, you put money in your church budget to reach children, yes. to minister to kids yes. in your neighborhood. Yes. So your budget should reflect that. And if you're in a new church, believe me, the budget would reflect evangelism and outreach and ministry to children. Yep. Without without any doubt at all. And then I think uh, the last thing about a new church, and there are many we could talk about that you could help define in your church, is that you really lay aside your preferences for the needs of the unreached. Yeah, yeah, and that's you really right. realize we're here to make, make disciples. We're here to be yep. evangelistic. We're here to love this community in a generous way that nobody else loves it. And if a church will reinvent itself and replant itself in that way— then really it doesn't matter, in my opinion, mm. whether you're denominate, Baptist or non-denominational, the Lord will bless them. Amen. That's it's great. a great article. You'll enjoy reading it as everything uh, Tom writes and uh, to give you some points of discussion. But if you've enjoyed this, man, we, we are grateful. If you haven't enjoyed it, 
uh, give us a shot. We'll do better next time. <laughs> really, we will. Uh, Kyle was looking at us like, this isn't the best podcast you've ever done. That's what he was doing. But um, Now, isn't there something like, we, we want guys to like this thing, right? Isn't we there do. something? I mean, how, how do they do that? How do they, they like need it? To do? Well, I don't know. What, what, what do they what, do? What, 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 subscribe. Subscribe. Whatever platform subscribe. you're on. Yes, right? whatever platform. If, if, you're, if you're on, if you're on uh, uh, iTunes or, or yeah. uh, Apple or... Uh, Mattel or Kenner, whatever, whatever it is, whatever, whatever it is. Platform. But but sincerely, man, we love yes. you, listener. We yes. love this. Please we, subscribe. Please, yeah, we love we love and are grateful for uh, you joining us. And check podcasts. us out at churchreplanters dot com. Thanks for joining us today on Revitalize and Replant. This podcast is brought to you by the North American Mission Board, where we help dying or struggling churches regain health for the glory of God and the good of their communities. If you found this conversation helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. To learn more about becoming a replanting pastor or to explore resources about revitalization for your own church, visit churchreplanters.com.